Hey guys, this is Ron. So this is video 14B uh, of our series on rediscovering the C programming language. In 14A, we talked about concurrency and some of the various um, higher level topics that kind of go along with it. We talked about, um, you know, what is concurrency used for? We talked about breaking our programs down into uh, tasks that we could execute simultaneously without you know breaking the overall uh, intent of our program and so one of the ways we talked about doing that was with fork and so 14b is about using fork uh, in our programs so what is forking again well it's the splitting of a process into two different processes and in doing so, we end up copying the memory from the original process into the new process. So they start at the same values, but the, the memory space between the two processes is completely separate. So at that point, they're the same, but then they begin diverging from there, right? And they have no way to communicate unless we've uh, built something in to allow that to happen. I've uh, linked in an article for, from Geeks for Geeks, which I've done a number of times throughout the series. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, the fork command returns is a value. Uh, that value indicates whether uh, it was successful or not. So a negative value says, hey, the fork process didn't take, right? It didn't work. A zero means that, hey, I'm the newly created process. Uh, I am the child in this case. A positive value uh, means that you are the parent of the fork and the value indicates the process ID or the PID of the child process, right? And so we can kind of see, and they've got uh, an example where they just literally call fork and so you get hello world coming back twice, once for the parent, once for the child. Uh, if you call fork a number of times, we end up getting quite a few hellos. And what we're see seeing here is that for every fork you do, you end up getting two more. So a fork, and then if you fork again, you've now got one, two, three, four. And then if you fork again, it's like, so you'll end up getting quite a few different processes this way. Um, and so, you know, you can get a little bit crazy on the number of times that you process or fork uh, and, and go from there. So the, thing again I think is important is when you do fork you check that return value and that will indicate whether you're the parent or the child because maybe as you broke up your program into various tasks you have tasks that you will assign to the child but not necessarily assign to the parent right so maybe the parent receives connections uh, from from a socket and then as it receives those connections it forks and then the child takes that new uh, new connection and it's what handles, you know, servicing that distant end user, right? That distant connection. And then the parent just goes back to listening for the next connection. As it receives a connection, it forks again and that child runs off and handles that connection. And when it's done handling that connection, it terminates itself, right? But the parent or that parent always stays there always listening for connections as it receives it it forks uh, and so now you have a program that can handle multiple users at the same time where each child necessarily you know it deals with that user right and so what is that gonna look like so again uh, just wanted to break down that a zero return is the uh, child the PID uh, is always returned to the parent and if you get a negative one back, the fork didn't work correctly, right? And so let's take a look at the man page for fork. So if we do a man for fork, we'll see that this is uh, a system uh, command, right? So uh, not necessarily right in the C uh, standard library, but a, a system command, right? And so we're gonna have to pull in systypes.h and unistandard.h, uh, right? And so fork creates a new process by duplicating the process. Um, it's referred to as a child and a parent. Child process and the parent process run in separate memory spaces. At the time of fork, both memory spaces have the same content. 
Uh, and so from at that point of fork, everything's the same, but then it diverges from there, right? And so it gives a, a good breakdown uh, as you go through here, gives additional things that you should probably be taking into consideration, um, all of those kind of great and wonderful things. Return values, PID of the child process is returned to the parent, zero is returned to the child, on failure, you get a negative one. So let's give it a try. Let's write a program that's going to use fort. So we'll just call this fort.c. We'll pound include stdo.h. Let's put our bracket in there. And then we have to include those other two. All right, so if I go back up to the top here, I'll go ahead and copy these. Paste that in. In main so we're not going to send anything to our main function and let's look again at how PID is or how fork is called well it's going to return a PID underscore T right and so under the hood this is really just an integer uh, and so PID underscore T we'll call this PID and let's give some shared resources we'll do like a my num equals five so we have a single variable uh, that both the parent and the child will end up with. And so we can do PID equals fork. And then we'll do if zero is equal to PID, we know we're the child, right? So print F, I'm a wild child and my num is percent D my num right so the child does get a copy of my num and then we're just going to do a get char all right and this is basically going to pause uh our child waiting for you know you to hit something on the keyboard and we'll do a print f we'll do stopping uh child and let's go ahead and we'll update my num so we can see them diverge. My num equals 10. So stopping child and my num. Well, we'll do stopping child. Oh my goodness, my num is percent D. All right, now we'll do an else here. So if it wasn't zero, we know we're at our parent. So print F, parent speaking, child PID is percent D, and my num is percent D. So this will be PID and my num colon here all right and then we'll also do a get char probably doesn't matter where we update the my num but so my num equals let's say this one's 20 for f stopping parent my num is D close that return zero and close our bracket so what do we do we establish a couple of variables we fork so at this at from this point forward there are two different processes running and those both of those processes are going to execute this block so if I was the child the thing that got returned to PID is zero. And so we should expect that when the child gets to this block, it will it will execute what's at the top. The parent uh, will receive back the PID of the child. And as it comes down here, uh, it'll check and it will execute this block. They will both wait for me to hit something uh, at the keyboard and then once that's done, they'll print out 
return zero and close down, all right? So let's give that a try. So we'll do a make, a fork, and what do we do? Uh, my num undeclared. Did I even give it? No, I didn't even give it a type. My goodness. Int. All right, so let's keep it simple. Make fork and fork works. All right, so let's go ahead and run fork. Oh man, did I forget to put, I did. So my parent did not put a carriage return. So now everything is squashed together. So I have it. carriage return, carriage return, carriage return, carriage return. Okay. So let's make this again. Just gonna close down. Make fork clear. I'll run fork again. Okay. And so we get two outputs. First, our parent executed first. Probably because it takes the child a second to uh, get spun up because it has to get created, data has to get copied over, and by then the parent has already executed. So parent speaking, child PID is 13945 and my num equals or is five. Uh, the child then comes back and says, hey, I'm a wild child and my num is five. So if we look, let me open a new tab, I can do PS and I can grab for fork. And I'll see that I am in fact running two different processes, right? So our child was 13945. So this is our child. And then this is the original process. This is our parent, right? So our parent forked. And now we have a parent process and a child process, right? Okay, so parent should be waiting for me to hit something. So if I hit enter, I do get stopping parent, my num is 20. So we updated my num from five to 20. And it looks like we're back at our prom, but we're really still waiting for the child, right? So if I hit enter again, I get stopping child, my num is 10. So although they both got my num at the beginning, because they're totally different processes at this point with their own shared or their own memory space, when I update my num in the parent, it doesn't update my num in the child, right? And so I can validate that by not doing this, right? So if I comment this line out, right? So I've now commented that out. I can make fork again. I can hit enter. So parent definitely updated it to 20 and child still thinks it's five, right? So they have totally different memory space even though they're called, you know, the same variables, all right? So that is fork. So again, if this was more of an intricate example where uh, we were receiving connections on a socket, uh, kind of like a web server, the parent could, you know, uh, receive the connection and immediately execute a fork. And so uh, that socket connection that it, it received, well, that gets copied into the, uh, the new process. And then that new process, that child can go off and call a function called handle connection or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and that would service that distant end connection. And then otherwise the parent then just loops back and starts receiving another connection, right? Uh, and Or listening for another connection. And so when one comes in, it automatically forks again. The child then runs off with that connection and handles it, right? And so this is, was a very simple example, but you know, you can kind of see where fork just splits the process, shared resource or those resources get copied into the new process. But at that point, they're totally different because they're in different memory space. And you know, the programs diverge from there, right? So I hope this was helpful. This just gives you a little tool in your tool bag uh, in order to be able to um, do some concurrent things, right? You know, handle multiple connections or, or whatever your program uh, needs. So hope it was useful and thanks for watching. Bye.